In this video, you will learn the features of the new PR1. The new PR1 form was designed based on workshops held with law enforcement from across the state. As a result, overlays were eliminated and all possible choices for each data element are located in the data entry box. Vehicle maneuver prefix and suffix were eliminated. Most officers identified these two fields as the most difficult to complete on the current form. Distracted driving data elements were added to the form to gain information about how texting or cell phone use is impacting safety in Connecticut. Supplemental forms were designed to limit data collection on the basic report for data elements that only apply in special cases. In an effort to improve data quality while not impacting an officer's ability to collect data, the Department of Transportation has greatly reduced the number of edit and validation rules. The new crash data system in Connecticut will have a dramatic impact on crash data quality, completeness, and timeliness. The electronic submission of crash data will eliminate the need for police departments to submit paper copies of crash reports to the Department of Transportation and reduce the demand on departmental administrative staff. The electronic submission process will also improve timeliness of crash data analysis. If crash data are submitted via XML, a crash can be processed and posted to the crash data repository site in a matter of days. In an effort to make crash diagramming easier and more uniform in Connecticut, the Department of Transportation has purchased enough licenses for every police department and officer in the state to have a copy of Easy Street Draw. Licenses for Easy Street Draw will be distributed to each department that requests a copy free of charge. The program uses drag and drop technology for a large library of intelligent objects that make the job of diagramming an accident scene quick, easy, and accurate. Lastly, the new crash report form complies to national standards, which means the data collected will ensure that Connecticut is eligible for federal funding to address crash-related issues identified through the analysis of crash data. The Department of Transportation has developed a fillable PDF form that will allow police departments to complete a crash report and then generate a file for electronic submission. This form will be available for use if your software vendor does not have an eCrash application ready by January 1, 2015, or if there is an issue with or failure of your CAD or RMS system, or if you just choose to use the fillable PDF due to the features that have been incorporated. This tutorial will describe the functions and features of the fillable PDF. Automatic page generation occurs when you change the number of motor vehicles or the number of non-motorists on the form. If you look at the top left of my page, it says page one of five, indicating that there are five pages in this report. If I change the number of motor vehicles from one to three and press enter, you will see that that changes and now says page one of 11, indicating that there are now 11 pages in this report. The PDF has added the additional six pages I need automatically. The same is true for the number of non-motorists. If I change the number of non-motorists from zero to three and press enter, you will see at the top left that my number of pages has again changed and now says one of 14. The PDF has automatically added the additional pages I need to complete the report. The case number is another feature that automatically populates. You do not need to enter the case number at the top of every page in the form. Simply enter the case number at the top of the first page and push enter. Now the case number automatically populates at the top of every page in the form. There are several ways to select the date of the crash. For convenience, the current date will automatically populate when you open the form. There are several ways you can change this date. First is to highlight and delete the current date and then enter in the date of the crash manually from your keyboard. The second way that you can change the date of the crash is to highlight and delete, and then select the arrow to the right. This will bring up a current calendar. You simply need to click on the day of the crash, and it will automatically be populated. If you need to select a day that is not in that month, click on the month, and it will bring you to a yearly calendar. 
If you need to select a year that is not in this current year, click the year and it will provide more year options. There are several ways to enter the town name where the crash occurred. First, put your cursor in the town name field and type in the town name. Notice that the town number to the right will automatically populate. You can also use the drop down menu and choose your town from a list of all towns in Connecticut. The town number will also automatically populate. The reverse is also true. If it's easier and faster for you to enter in your town number rather than type in your town name, you can click into the town number field and type in your town number. The town name to the left will automatically appear. You can also use the drop down menu to select your town number from a list of all town numbers in Connecticut. There are several ways to enter attributes on the form. The first way is simply to click. For example, under Trafficway Ownership, if I wanted the attribute to be 01 Public Road, I simply need to put my mouse on Public Road and click. If I wanted it to say Parking Lot under Trafficway Class, I simply need to put my mouse on Parking Lot and click. The second way to select an attribute is using the drop down menu. For example, if I want it to say Daylight under Light Conditions, I click on the arrow to the right which will bring up a drop down menu. I then select the number value I am looking for and click to enter it into that field. The third way I can select an attribute is by typing it in. For example, if I want the location of the first harmful event to be 02, shoulder, I simply take my mouse and click in the field so that the cursor appears. Type in the number value that you need and then click tab to automatically take you to the next field. If the first harmful event is anything other than 14, motor vehicle and operation, then the manner of impact should automatically populate to 88, not applicable, as manner of impact only applies to multi-vehicle crashes. For example, if the first harmful event is 40, deer, then 88 automatically populates in manner of impact. If the crash did not occur in a work zone, and you click on No under Work Zone, 88 will automatically populate under the Location, Type, Workers Present, and Enforcement Present fields, showing that they are not applicable. To insert an easy street image or other picture into your report, go to the Diagram section on the back of the Crash Summary page. Click anywhere in the Diagram box. This will bring you to your folders, allowing you to browse for the image you want to select. Choose your image and click Open. The image is now inserted into the diagram section of your report. Another feature of the PDF is that it automatically populates the correct type and number of pages when you add occupants to your vehicle. To add occupants to a vehicle, go to the front page of the Motor Vehicle Information form. On the top left of the page, it says Number of Occupants In, and then there's a drop-down menu. Use the drop-down menu to select occupants in a vehicle or bus. I will select bus. Then use your keypad to enter the number of occupants in that vehicle to the right of the drop-down menu. I will enter 15. Once you have selected the type of vehicle from the drop-down menu and entered your number of occupants, click Enter. A pop-up screen will appear asking if you really would like to add the number of occupants and the type of vehicle you just selected. Click Yes. Now if I scroll down, I can see that the number of occupants in the type of vehicle I have requested has been added to my form. The PDF makes it easy to record location information about crashes that have occurred at an intersection. To record location information, go to Crash Occurred On Field and enter in the name of the two streets where the crash occurred. I will enter in Elm Street and Main Street. Once your two street names are in the fields, click Enter. Now you'll notice that if I scroll down to the Motor Vehicle Information page, I do not need to manually enter the road on which the vehicle was traveling. I simply click on the drop down menu and the two streets that I have already entered at the intersection above appear for me to easily click and enter into the form. 
On the front of the motor vehicle information page, at the very bottom of the page, there is a section asking if the vehicle was towed and where it was towed to. If the vehicle was not towed, click Not Towed. NA will automatically appear in the Towed To field, indicating that it is not applicable since the vehicle was not towed. To indicate a contact point or damaged area on a motor vehicle, go to the front of the Motor Vehicle Information page. On that page is a section titled Motor Vehicle Damage with a clock diagram. You can click anywhere on that clock diagram to show first the initial contact point and then damaged areas. You may choose up to three damaged areas. For example, if there was a crash where a vehicle had a head-on collision with a tree, I could click 12 to indicate that the initial contact point was in the front of the vehicle. I could then click 11, 12, and 1 to indicate that the damaged areas were all also in the front of the vehicle. The PDF makes it easy for you to tell if you are entering in the correct driver information for the correct vehicle. If you go to the Motor Vehicle Driver Information form, a vehicle icon will appear on the left top of the form. Take your cursor and hover it over the vehicle icon to find out the make, model, year, and color of the vehicle you are filling out driver information for. This icon is only to be used while you are filling out the crash report and will not show up on the printed form. On the Motor Vehicle Driver Information form, at the bottom of the form is a section for drug and alcohol information. Under alcohol test status, if you click test not given, a value of 88 will automatically appear under type of alcohol test, indicating that it is not applicable since no alcohol test was given. The same is true for a drug test. If you click test not given under drug test status, a value of 88 will appear under type of drug test, indicating that it is not applicable since no drug test was administered. The validate button is the check button located at the top right of every page in the report. It is a way to check and make sure that all of the information has been entered and entered correctly before you hand in your report. For example, this is a completely filled out crash report. I want to check and make sure that all of the information has been entered correctly before I submit it. So I'll hit the check or validate button at the top right of my form. If there are any errors in the form, it will take me to an error listing. The error listing shows any crash information that has been entered in incorrectly, and in field 1 and field 2, gives me buttons that will immediately take me to that section of the report so I can fix it. The type column tells you if the error is a rule violation or a warning. In my example, the error is a rule violation. A rule violation will appear as a red field in the report and must be fixed before the report can be submitted. A warning will appear as a yellow field in the report and brings your attention to entries that are not definitely wrong, but that possibly could have been entered incorrectly. For example, a warning would appear if the date of the crash was in June, but the weather condition entered was snow. It is not impossible, but it is improbable, so the PDF gives you a warning to check and make sure that this is the information you meant to enter. The message column tells me what the error that needs to be fixed is. In this example, in the message box it says that if at least one person has an injury status, then the crash severity must equal fatal or injury. Now that I know what the error is, I can click in field 1 or field 2 to take me immediately to that error. I will start with field 2. This takes me to injury status. I know that there was a possible injury, so that field is correct. To get back to the error listing, I can click validation at the top of any page in the form. This takes me back to the error listing. Since I know that field was entered correctly, I will click on the other field. This is where the error has occurred. Although there was an injury in this crash, under crash severity, I have selected property damage only. The form highlights injury in red, showing that that is the proper correction for this error. If I click injury and revalidate the form by clicking on the check button at the top right of the page, a box will come up showing that everything has been fixed and there were no rule violations or warnings found. If I click OK, 
The red highlighted box has disappeared. The form is now correct and ready to submit. All reports need to be submitted to the Department of Transportation via XML or a text file. To turn your report into an XML file and save it to your computer, click on the XML button located on the top right of the very first page of your crash report. When you click the XML button, a pop-up box will appear telling you that no rule violations or warnings were found, meaning that it is OK to submit your report. Click OK. The next pop-up box that will appear is the Send Email box, asking you how you would like to send your email. You will never send an email with a crash report attached, as it contains personal and private information. But for the purposes of saving your report as an XML file, when the Send Email box pops up, click Default Email Application, and then click Continue. This will bring up an email with your complete crash report as an attached item. This attached item is your crash report in XML form. To save it to your computer, right-click on the file, choose Save As, then name your file and choose the folder you would like to save it to. Once you have done this, click Save. The XML version of your crash report is now saved to your computer, and you can close the email. The Help button looks like a question mark and is located on the top right of the first page of the PR1 form. When you click on the Help button, a window will pop up providing you with additional information on where to get help from the Connecticut Department of Transportation. For more information about the PR1, visit the Connecticut Transportation Safety Research Center website using the following link.